Measuring your own deer antlers is really not as difficult as some people may make it seem. It's actually pretty easy and it can be a lot of fun. Here I have an eight pointer that I killed just a couple weeks ago on the opening day of rifle season here in Missouri. And I always enjoy being able to put some uh, shoelaces and tape measures on these antlers and see how much they, they measure and how much they score and then make kind of a cool mount out of them that's really inexpensive and isn't going to cost you a lot of money. So I'm not an official scorer, but I've done several of these over the years. A nice, clean, typical deer rack can be pretty straightforward. It's a lot of fun to see what they end up scoring. There are sheets that you can print off online probably that you can write down all the measurements per the G, the H, the main, the main beam, and add all that up as you go. Or you can use an app that I, the one I like to use is called Stag Brag. With Stag Brag, it lets you input all the measurements as you go and then it keeps tallying it up as you go. And then you don't have to worry about trying to add up the whole numbers and then add up the eighths of numbers and things like that as you're going through your sheet. And it takes a lot of the math, doing the math out of the equation, which is kind of nice. So when I get done with the measurements, I'm going to write them all down on paper. Then I'll input them into the app and I'll show you guys a screen recording of what the app looks like as I'm inputting the measurements. And then maybe as you have a rack that you need to measure, you can download that app. It's free. I think it shows a couple ads while you're using it, but it's, it's worth it. And then you can use that app also to input your measurements and see what your deer scores. They make different tools and accessories that you can use to measure deer antlers now. I think there's some fancy tapes that you can put on them. I, all I end up using is a tape measure, a nice long shoelace, you, or, or a string or a rope of some sort, something flexible. You don't want to, <laughs> you're not going to be able to put a tape measure or tape on antlers around a main beam and get accurate. It's, it's going to be a huge pain. But if you use something flexible like a shoelace or a rope or a string even, Something that isn't going to stretch a whole lot, but still is flexible enough that you can get around some of these points and, and angles and circumferences and things like that. And the only other thing you need, like I said, is a score sheet. If you want to print one of those, you can probably find even a even online where you could input as you go. Or like I said, I like to use the Stag Brag app on my iPhone and it works really well for inputting those totals and then adding them up for you. And the last thing you need is a deer rack. So there are four main measurements that you're going to make when you're doing, when you're measuring a deer rack. One is the inside spread, which is from the greatest width inside of the antlers. There's the main beam length, which is from the base of the main beam all the way out to the tip of the main beam. There are all the G's, which are the points, which what we call points, which would be any of these. With an eight pointer like this, you're going to have three, one, two, three. You don't measure this last one out, out to the end. That doesn't count. And then the last measurement that you do is the circumference around the main beams. So those are called H's. That's going to be here on an eight pointer. It's here, the first base between the G1, which is your brow tine and the base of the antler. The next, the next H is here between the G1 and the G2, and it's supposed to be the smallest circumference that you have. And then the last one on an eight pointer is going to be between your G2 and your G3. And again, the smallest circumference around the main beam. That's where, it, that's where being an official scorer, I think, comes into play. They're going to be a lot more technical and a lot more um, specific about where the smallest circumference is or where they're measuring on the G points. But I'm going to go ahead and get started and kind of show you guys uh, the way that I do this. So the first, the first one that I want to do, there is a fifth one, actually, but it doesn't count toward the score. It's just a characteristic measurement and it's called the tip to tip spread. So I, I record this, but it, again, it doesn't count toward the measurement because it's not actually measuring any antler. The tip to tip is just what it sounds like. And when I do this with a shoelace, I don't stretch it really a lot. I, I kind of hold it tight, but I'm not like stretching it a lot to try to get more inches out of it because I like to try to be honest when I do this too. But your tip to tip spread is just like this. What I like to do is I, I go to the end of the shoelace there and hold it with my with those fingers. Get where, get where the mark is here, squeeze it real tight, and I take it away. You move the rack out of the way if you want to. And usually if you get your tape measure, you're probably not going to be measuring anything that's really long. So you can kind of lay it out and then go from the end to where you're squeezing, and you can get somewhere in there. Right there I've got 11 and, and 4 eighths. So 11 and a half inches 
everything with deer antler measurements is in the eighths. So you don't put one half, you put four eighths. And I'm going to go ahead and record that on my paper here. And again, when I get done with all writing all this down, I'll get into the stag brag app and I'll show you guys kind of what it all looks like in there. But I'll write down 11 and 4 eighths for the tip to tip. Again, the tip to tip is only a characteristic measurement. It's like if someone was looking at a, at a score sheet of a deer and they, you know, saw that a tip to tip measurement was only three or four inches, they're going to know that was a really kind of a tight, maybe a high and tight rack. Um, if, if the tip to tip is really far apart, then it might be one where the main beams kind of jut outward instead of ever curling back inward like a typical rack does. This is a pretty typical, I mean, a pretty clean eight pointer, um, about a cleaner than eight pointers you can get. The next measurement that I like to do, get started is the inside spread. So with the inside spread, you want to go from the widest, uh, widest points between the inside of the antlers. So you're not measuring from the outside to the outside, you're measuring the inside. So I just kind of grab what it looks like the widest spot is, probably right about there, and then go over to the other side. And again, not really pulling real tight on the on the shoelace, but getting pretty close. That's gonna be about right there. So we'll squeeze in that shoelace the whole time. We'll get this tape measure set out here. Again, they make tools for this that make it a little bit easier. I actually need a little more tape there. They make tools for this, so a little, easier, a little easier. That one we are looking at, we're going to call that 17 and 0 eighths on the inside spread. Yes, I said 0 eighths. I am a bit of a perfectionist and detailed person, so I have to write that down even if it says 0, and I think on an official score sheet you're going to see it say 0 eighths. It's not just going to say 17. So that's your inside spread. Now that's going to be your first measurement that's actually going to count toward your score. So after I get that inside spread, the next measurement that I like to do is the length of the main beams. This can be one of the trickier ones to get because you've got to go from the base of the antler all the way up around the inside and out to the end. Um, that can just be a little bit tricky, but that's why you need something like a shoelace or something flexible to get this with. You obviously would have a heck of a time trying to get a tape measure to go and fit around that. It's not very malleable. So you've got to do the right and the left. This is where you get into the right and the left measurements. So I always call the right antler. The, the right one is the one that if I were looking at the rack from behind, this is the right one. So I call that the right one. Again, I don't know if that's the official way to do it, but that's the way I've always done it. So you're going to hold the end of the shoelace down here at the bottom. And with this one, you've got to kind of hold your, your fingers on the, the shoelace as you go up the rack and as you get around this point where the, where the rack starts to curl and the main beam starts to curl that's where you've got to really try to hold it pretty pretty steady because you're gonna because you can start losing see i already kind of let go there around Again, I'm not an official scorer, but I can get pretty close. That's going to be about right there. Switch fingers there so I can, okay. Get your tape measure back out. Okay. And then go to the end. And then this one, we've got 17 and 3 eighths. And that one is on the right main beam. It's right down here on our sheet. 17 and 3 eighths. And again, we'll punch all this into the app whenever we get done. Okay, so then the next measurement is going to be the left main beam. Start down at the bottom where that burr is where their, their antler attaches to their head. And trying to, trying to keep it right in the middle of that main beam, what I try to do anyway. And then with these main beams, you're just trying to keep it little measurements to keep it attached. <laughs> Some of you are probably wondering how I'm doing this, how I'm recording this one. And I've enlisted my lovely wife to 
help me out on this one because this is one that I really can't do without some assistance. And we get 16 and 5 eighths on that one. So it's almost a whole inch shorter on that side. All right, so now that we've got the inside spread and the two main beams done, now we're going to move to the H's. The H's are probably, they're not difficult, but again, you're going around and you're supposed to go around the smallest circumference around the main beam. This is where not being official comes into play for me. I try to go around the smallest circumference, but I, I don't know if officially someone might measure several places and say this was the smallest, so that's what I'm going to use, but I kind of just go somewhere in the middle. So the first one is going to be between the base of the antler and the first G1. And again, you don't want to pull real tight, but you want to get as close as you can. You can probably shorten this thing up quite a bit now. It's tape measure because we're not going to have any 17 inch H's. If you do, you've got a really big deer. Okay. Maybe about five and one eighth on that first one. And that's going to be on the right side. So we're going to write down five and one eighth. Then on our next one, shorten this up considerably here. For now, when we get to the G points, we'll have to extend out probably a little bit more. Now on the H2, I'm going to pull it around there, that one. Now with the H's, you can only have, this one is 3 and 7 eighths. No, we're going to say 3 and 6. 3 and 6 eighths on that one. See, I can be honest. With the H's, you can only have 4. You can only have H1, H2, H3, H4. You can't have more than that. So if you have a if you have a 10 pointer, you're going to have four exactly. On an eight pointer, you're only going to have three. Um, if you have a 20 pointer, you're only going to have four. I, I don't I don't know why that is, but it's one of the rules that they have. You're only you can only have four H's. If any of you guys are watching this that are better at scoring than me, you might be able to give some shed some light on why that is. But that's just the way the rules are. And the last one on that right side is going to be. Three and five eighths, which is pretty. And the other one was three and six eighths. Okay, so that's the right side H's. Now we're going to move over to the left side. Start at the bottom here. So you can see this can be really enjoyable and you can do it rather quickly now that it's a race. Four and four and five eighths on that one. Which is pretty amazing when you look at one of these racks, you go, wow, that looks pretty symmetrical, looks pretty similar. And once you start putting the, the tape to it, you go, wow, there is some difference there. <clears throat> now the next one is at H2. If anything, I try to shorten these up just a one, one eighth because there is a little gap it tends to be between that shoelace and where it's the end of it and where you're at. So that one's three and six, six eighths, which is the same as what the other side was. And the last one, the last of the H's, E right there. And that one is three and four eighths. Very similar to the other side. All right, so now we have all of our H measurements done. Now the last the last measurement we have to do before we get to total it all up are the G's. With G's, you can have as many G's as that deer can grow. So with the H's, you can only have four. With the G the G's, you can have as many as the deer has. So if it's a eight pointer, you're going to have one, two, three. You don't count this extra part of the main beam. It doesn't work that way. It has to be the G's are the points coming out of the main beam. So this one's coming out of the main beam, that one's coming out, that one's coming out. These are just part of the main beam, so they don't count as a G. Um, if you have a 20 pointer, you're going to have a, whatever that equals, probably 18, maybe, or whatever that ends up being. G1, 2, 3. We call this a point whenever we look at a deer, but it doesn't count as a G point. But anyway, 
With these, you're supposed to measure from the middle of the main beam, or from where the point comes out from the main beam. It's typically right toward the middle, out to the end on the inside of the point. These ones are pretty easy to do, especially if you've got a clean clean 8-pointer or a clean 10-pointer or something like that, like this. So this is going to be for the right side first. That's a 5 and 3 eighths. That's your G1. I think one thing they don't take into consideration with deer antlers is what if you have a buck that has a lot of mass? He carries a lot of mass in his Gs and his points. Um, you, that doesn't really get figured in, and I've, I've heard that discussed before. Um, now, if they were going to mo make modifications to the mess that up a little bit. If they were going to make modifications to the scoring system, they might figure in how can I get the mass measurements out of the G's. Oops. Kind of slick sometimes. But again, not official. I can get pretty close, I think. Okay. That one is going to be 8 and 2 eighths. And we're almost almost done here with this side. All right, and then the last G point on this right side, we go 2 there. That one's going to be short. Be 4 and 5 eighths on that one. All right, now we'll switch to the other side, and then we'll be ready to tally all this up. You got a kind of crooked little G1 here. Kind of cool little character. This G1 is 4 and 6 eighths, which is a little bit shorter. Than that other one. Yep. Kind of hard to see it with the naked eye, but. And then this one. Seven and five eighths on that one. And then the G3 is going to be the last measurement that we have before we start punching all this in. And again, you're just going to go from the, from the main beam out to the end of that point. And that one's going to be 5 and 0 eighths. Okay, so now that we have all our measurements, we'll go ahead and get those punched in the app and total up. So this is the app that I use called stag brag to enter these measurements and make it easier to calculate them as I go instead of having to add them up on paper uh, or in my head and trying to do math with fractions and such. There are ads that pop up in it. I'm sure you can pay for a subscription, but I just use the free one. And you can even have a little trophy room up there that'll show past deer that you've measured. So for the first measurement on our inside spread, just tap into that first part. It's gonna be 17 on the whole number and zero on the eighths for the tip to tip spread which doesn't count toward the total it was 11 and 4 eighths for the greatest spread which would be a measurement that i don't think really matters there i don't even in input it because the inside spread is what counts you don't put anything there for the left beam we had 16 and 5 eighths. For the right beam, we had 17 and 3 eighths. Oops. Then for the left G1, we had 4 and 6 eighths. For the left G2, <clears throat> left G2, we had 7 
and 5 eighths. For the left G3, we had 5 and 0 eighths. Make sure I got all that right. Okay. For the right G1, we had 5 and 3 eighths. For the right G2, we had 8 and 2 eighths. For the right G3, we had 4 and 5 eighths. Then as a reminder on the H's, this only goes up to 8 G8s, but if you have more than that, you're probably doing something even more official than this. All right, so for the left H1, we had 5 and 1 eighths. For the left H2, we had, nope, that was the right. Hold on. For the left H1, we had 4. Five eighths. For the left H2, we had three and six eighths. For the left H3, we had three and four eighths. Then for the right H1, we had five and one eighths. Right H2, we had three and six eighths. For the right H3, three and five eighths. And we'll go back and make sure I did everything correctly. For the inside spread, we had 17 and 0 eighths. For the tip to tip, which doesn't count toward the total, it's just characteristic, 11 and 4 eighths. For the left main beam, we had 16 and 5 eighths. For the right main beam, we had 17 and 3 eighths. For the left G1 was 4 and 6. The left G2 was 7 and 5. And the, right, the left G3 was 5 and 0. The right G1 was 5 and 3, then 8 and 2, then 4 and 5. Back down to the H's on the left, we had 4 and 5, 3 and 6, 3 and 4. And then on the right side, we had 5 and 1, 3 and 6, and 3 and 5. Now we hit Enter, and our gross total was 111. So then we'll add to the trophy room, and it gave a typical net. Then you can go in and add all these different things, like if you named your deer something, if you, you can choose the species. If you named your deer something, I didn't, uh, this is maybe the first encounter I had with this deer, so it doesn't have a name. Where the stand was, you killed it, the date of the kill of the harvest, the time of the harvest, if you want, so on and so forth. But that's kind of how, how this app works. I always like to use the gross total because I think the deer deserves to have all that that measurement in there, and I don't care about symmetry, so I don't usually take deductions away. But that's how you use the app. So there you have it. That's how you measure white-tailed deer antlers. I hope you get a chance to practice on some. If you have some laying around, or you have a family member that has some laying around, or a friend who maybe killed a deer recently, maybe you could practice on theirs and see what they score. I think that there's a lot of deer antlers and racks that people don't don't treasure or value as much as as i think they should i think that the deer did a lot of work and survived a lot of things to be able to grow a set of antlers i think that it pays them a lot of honor and respect to be able to put a put a tape measure to them see how much they score and then put their antlers on some sort of mount and i'll show you guys how to do that how i do that in a future video for very inexpensive a very cheap way to do it Thank you for watching Farming for Whitetails. We'll see you next time.